Progress, progress, progress. Hey everyone, today we're gonna go over the full Robinhood portfolio today. I try to do these updates at least once a month. So if you like seeing what a dividend portfolio update looks like and the progression throughout time, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. The market went down about 5% this past week, but that's normal. We can't expect the market to just go up and up nonstop on our way to becoming rich. Also, this means that there might be more attractive prices at higher starting dividend yields for us now. In terms of if I think we'll see the market plummet again, in terms of the short term because of the C19 or maybe a second wave of the C19, I think that's pretty unlikely. I think we're going to continue to see cases continue to stagger downwards. I can't see us doing the total shutdown of the economy like we did back in March. People are now much more educated about the C-19 than when this first came out. And we didn't really have a lot of information about what this was and, and how you can even maybe get it. We still have many unknowns, but it does seem like doctors know how to treat it a bit better and more data is showing that it's mostly people in the older demographic who have higher mortality rates. 80% of the deaths from the C-19 are among those eight, older than the age of 65. So I have a hard time believing that businesses will be shut down again indefinitely with statistics like this. Plus at this point, I don't think that people are gonna comply. So if you're holding out in investing because you think a second wave is coming, I personally wouldn't hold my breath. I do think that the markets could fall because of this double digit unemployment rate that we have. And of course, the Q2 earnings that will come out next month are not gonna be looking that pretty. And I can see the markets fall if it's weaker than people had anticipated. All right, now let's get into the actual portfolio here. I left a few notes on stocks I wanna highlight a little bit more as we go through this. I grouped these somewhat by category and maybe that will stop me from rambling as I know I tend to do that a little bit when I go through the portfolio. I also added a brand new stock, so be sure to keep an eye out for that one as we go through this. All right, so the first stock is Apple, of course, here. I have phenomenal returns here of almost 70%. This was actually up in the $1,000 of total return, which was which would easily be my best performing stock. I'm trying to get a lot of my positions close to 10 shares each. So if that happened with Apple, that would be uh, close to maybe almost $4,000 in total equity. So you can see Apple hitting 400 by the end of this year, maybe. As you can see in the last three months alone, it's been up 40% when we've been doing uh, so bad in the overall economy. Uh, just crazy to see that it's up so much, but at the same time, that means its PE ratio is now at 26 and it has a dividend yield of less than 1%, but still a great buy. I'm gonna try and get a couple more shares in here uh, by the end of the year. Then we have Microsoft at 188. And this has a 43% total return. I own 11 shares for an average cost of 130. So been buying at some pretty good price points here. Makes up about 6.5% of my portfolio. And uh, it's just been doing, again, very phenomenal here. These, these strong companies like Apple and Microsoft, they are able to carry the rest of the market just because they are so big. Apple at 1.47 trillion and Microsoft at one point, also 1.42 trillion. So very large companies here. Moving on here, we have the card processing stocks in Visa and MasterCard, both very great stocks as well. These are ones that I will continue to add into. Visa is still, I think, at a decent price based on where it was uh, before we had this whole situation. It was around 213. So it might still be at a little bit of a discount, but uh, again, very high PE ratio for stocks like this. And then we have MasterCard at $297, $124 in total return. I uh, expect both of these companies just to continue to do well. These Both of these companies basically have a duopoly. Visa and MasterCard were the best companies in this sector 20 years ago. They are the best stocks in this sector right now. And I have no doubt that they will continue to be the best stocks in this sector 20 years from now. All right, moving on here, this is one that I actually have a negative return on, and that is the, the oil tanker stock in DHT Holdings. And this is one that I probably just bought a few days way too, um, too early here. So I kind of bought it when it was just going up and up. I probably should have waited just a few days and then I could have gotten in at a much better price. Uh, this is one that I initially bought for a short-term swing trade, but it didn't work out the way I thought it would, but it did pay a very phenomenal dividend the last time I 
had it for 875 that's 35 cents a share for the 25 shares that i own for a total of 875 so that's a, if it did that for four quarters that would be close to like a 17 percent dividend yield now at DHT, it doesn't pay out consistently like the same dividend every quarter like most stocks do. So it'll be interesting to see if it can continue to pay out that th that much in dividends. Uh, I'm not I'm not gonna continue to bet on that happening. I'm just gonna continue to hold it at this point. It's got some long-term customers locked up in contracts, so it'll continue to be profitable even though I think the economy is opening up way sooner than most people thought when they bought these oil tanker stocks when that was the crazy thing to do just a few months ago. So not disappointed in this purchase. I knew it was more speculation and I'm just gonna now just hold it and just collect the dividends. Then we got the banking stocks and JP Morgan and Bank of America still down on this position. This is one that I have not been buying at uh, very nice um, starting price points here. So uh, still down over $100 on this one. But these banking stocks have been pretty volatile here recently. You can see in the last three months, just look at how much it just continues to fluctuate. Would be a good stock, I think, just to swing trade based on its highs and lows. And then Bank of America, this is one I bought a lot of very recently, and uh, I was up on this position until it just crashed down again. You can see it's down 13% in the last week. Do have a dividend pending from them since I owned 34 shares, 18 cents, six dollars and 12 cents that will be paid on the 26th. Then if we continue to go down here, we have the pharmaceutical stocks in Pfizer, Johnson & Johnson. No, definitely not Pepsi, but Pfizer. Um, this is one that I wanted to talk just a little bit about. They had a setback with its breast cancer fighting drug coming out out of its pipeline that could have netted them nearly $8 billion in annual sales. But that doesn't mean that Pfizer isn't getting out other medications or getting those medications approved. It had 10 regulatory approvals in 2019. It's doing a lot of acquisitions, a lot of partnerships as well to continue to grow that bottom line. This is a very large company, $187 billion market cap. Right now is giving you a very attractive starting dividend yield of 4.4%. This is basically a blue chip company. Uh, we don't really have any worries about this one going out of business or anything like that. Uh, still down, I think, just overall in terms of all the dividends I received, but it's just gonna be one that I continue to hold. Uh, probably just get my average cost down and continue to collect dividends on. So we have Johnson & Johnson here at $142. Been down a little bit this last week, but still have pretty good returns on it and we will just continue to hold for the long term, collect that dividend, and hopefully never sell out of this great company. Then we got Abby here at $92. So those of you that bought this when this stock was down in the $60 range back once in March, but then you also had another huge chance here in the towards the end of 2019 and had like a starting yield of like over 7%. Uh, you guys have been rewarded very well for investing in those times. You would, yeah, you would have gotten a ridiculous starting dividend yield uh, and you would have gotten a pretty good return in terms of capital appreciation as well. So this is one that I was down pretty big on uh, before. I had once bought this towards its all time high back around here and then it just fell and fell and then I've been able to average down and now have positive returns in Abby, as well as I've also been getting paid very nicely in dividends with them. Um, as you can see here, if we go to the dividends every quarter, just continuing to increase the amount of money I get. And this is one of the stocks that I have a drip set on. So it'll just continue to buy itself as well. And then we have Medtronic. This obviously isn't a pharmaceutical company. This is more of a medical equipment uh, provider here. So this is one that's really just boggling my mind why this stock continues to go down. As you can see here in the past year, it's down 4%, but you, from based on where it was uh, before the C19, it was $121. Hospitals had to stop scheduling non-emergency procedures, which hurt medical equipment companies like Medtronic. And this is as short-term news as possible as you can get in the stock market. This isn't gonna be something that's obviously gonna go out indefinitely. It's gonna eventually have to change here. This isn't a Medtronic company or a sector-wide issue. This is just the reality of the state that we are currently in. And I have no doubt that that will continue to change. This is one that has not recovered to the same point that most stocks have done in these past three months, but I have no doubt that they will continue to go back up to where it was pre-C19 eventually here. So I've just been buying and averaging down. This is one that I bought this past week. So it may still be down right now, but again, I have no doubt that it'll just continue to go up. And it was even in the hundreds just, <laughs> just earlier this month. So 
uh, just continue to hold them. Medtronic has a great pos cash position, has very good financials in terms of its balance sheet. Medtronic is almost a dividend king, and uh, this is one that I don't think gets enough respect that it really does deserve. Uh, usually people gloss right over this one. It's looking very intriguing here. All right, moving on, we have Pepsi, Starbucks, and Coca-Cola. All of these stocks will continue to perform well here. Uh, past three months, Pepsi's up 12%. I'm up on this position as well. As you can see, up 6.6%. 6, 6 and just been collecting my dividends and holding strong. Pepsi, a very diversified soft drink maker. Then Starbucks, this is another one that I wanted to discuss a little bit about. It's been in the news here this past week. That's why it's been down so much. But Starbucks has now reopened 95% of their US stores and people are like total zombies for coffee. Coffee addiction is socially accepted. It's a socially accepted dependence. And people ask me, do I think now that people are working from home and that more of them have maybe learned that they can make their own coffee, will that stop them from going to Starbucks and ordering a coffee from there? And the answer to that is no, because people are lazy and people are would rather pay $5 to have a barista do that for them. So Starbucks, it fell when they announced that 400 of their stores would now just be pickup zones, which really, if you think about it, isn't that big of a deal because that's what most of their customers did anyway. And that saves them from possibly having to spend more on real estate costs. And with the whole C19 situation, I doubt people just want to linger around crowded places already. So had Starbucks not went up 5% on Friday here, which it unfortunately did, I probably would have bought a couple more shares. I want to see this stock price fall closer to 70 before I buy more. Um, so I'm down, up a little bit on this position. Uh, we'll just continue to collect those dividends and Starbucks, it may be hurt here in the short run, but if we think about this in the long-term investing uh, outlook, I do think it will eventually go back up and people will continue to enjoy Starbucks. Then Coca-Cola at 45.63 also just had its dividend, ex-dividend date. So we'll be collecting dividends for the 12 shares of them that I own. So when Coca-Cola has its name all over the sponsorships on next year's Olympics, I want you to think of Coke, uh, Coca-Cola that is of course. And I want you to think of me, of course. All right, moving on here, we have the semiconductor stocks in NVIDIA, Intel, Applied Materials. And these have been doing very well for me as well. So we have NVIDIA with over a $349 return, 32%, and this is making up close to 4% of my portfolio. I want to try and get this one to $2,000 in equity by the end of this year. So it's a very uh, realistic chance that NVIDIA might be able to do that just in capital appreciation, but it could also be done by just me adding more shares. So NVIDIA will be a huge player in artificial intelligence. It's also going to be huge when more and more Teslas and other cars have more autonomous driving features. NVIDIA is one of the big players in that. NVIDIA also does so much in the gaming world. And I know this PS5 just came out, but NVIDIA actually doesn't do much business with Sony. That's more of an AMD thing. Intel at $59.50, still positive on this one as well, up almost 10% in total return. Applied Materials, one of my better buys, up $87.00 and makes up about 3% of my portfolio. Also got this one up to $1,000 in equity, which is pretty cool. Uh, the more stocks that I can get over 1,000. And then we got the real estate stocks in NRZ, Medical Properties Trust, Store, and Realty Income. I know some people have been making fun of me. Uh, again, guys, I intentionally mispronounced this company. I know it's pronounced Realty, not reality, or I sometimes I combine the two and call it reality. But uh, it's just been a long running joke on this channel. Um, so if you're newer and are wondering why I've been mispronouncing it this whole time, uh, I'm not. I'm doing it on purpose. And this is a monthly paying company here, 164. It's gonna it's gonna continue to repurchase itself. I was trying to give an analogy that. It's just kind of like your stomach eating itself when it's hungry, but this would actually be like the opposite of that. So if you have a good analogy for a dividend reinvestment, please let me know in the comments and be sure to hit that like button while you're at it if you haven't already done so. So I know we make a lot of jokes on this channel about NRZ, but this stock has really rebounded very well here in the last, uh, what is it, month here. It's up 37%. 
And if you had bought this when it fell to like $3, and let's say that NRZ does go back to paying its 50 cent dividend like it did pre-C19, you could have gotten an insane starting yield. So as much as we joke about NRZ, it has been holding its own form here. Let's see how it does on its next quarter's earnings call scheduled for July 30th. So that should be pretty interesting. The Medical Properties Trust here, been doing phenomenal. These hospitals got a lot of money in that last stimulus package. So they're able to use that money to pay rent among other hospital expenses. Now, most real estate, it involves either residential or commercial. Uh, and M MPW is basically more in the hospital scene. And store and O, those are more commercial. And then NRZ is more mortgage based. And then we get Equinex, which is uh, real estate, but for data centers. I've made a whole video on this one if, you, if you're unfamiliar with what this company does. So be sure to check that out. This has been one of my better performing stocks here, up 33%, makes up about 4% of my portfolio. And I might have to buy another share of this before the year is over because data centers are, are not going anywhere. They're very important. Then we have waste management at 104.99. I don't really understand why people were selling this stock or are people just not going to be using or producing waste anymore. We're definitely going to need somebody to pick up our garbage and we will probably continue to pay for those services. Waste management basically operates in a monopoly in the sections that they are in. So as this company continues to expand, it will just continue to do well here. I've averaged down on this position enough that it's, I'm almost positive on it and it will, I'll just continue to sit back, collect those dividends, try to get a few more shares here so I can get at least $1,000 in equity. Procter & Gamble, another stable uh, defensive company that will is not going anywhere anytime soon. Up 48% up on this stock. I bought this at some really good prices back when uh, it was 2018. It's been almost two years now since I've bought any shares of them. I have them on drip here, so it's kind of repurchasing itself as well, even if I don't manually go out and buy them. All right, then we have Boeing at $189.40. This is one I'm still pretty disappointed, uh, basically on how their management and how just overall what this company has done ever since I really bought it. And UNH here at $285.15. Another one that's been performing very well for me. And we have Amazon. I recently bought this for the first time. Um, actually just did a fractional purchase because, you know, just going out and spending $2,500 on a stock and hoping you bought it at the right price. Uh, that didn't sound too great for me. Uh, I'd rather just continue to add in maybe $100 or $200 equity uh, over long periods of time and get my uh, dollar cost averaging into this phenomenally run company, Amazon, market cap of $1.2 trillion. And you can see here in the last five years, it's up almost 500%. So uh, yeah, that's a return of 100% almost every year, uh, which is absolutely insane. Uh, and I actually just picked up something from Amazon. I didn't even know they had this feature. I don't really use Amazon because it doesn't really go well with my minimalist lifestyle, but I picked up some uh, earbuds and I actually had it shipped to an Amazon locker, which isn't actually like a store called Amazon where they just have lockers. It's, it was basically in like this clothing store and it had like these lockers towards where the restrooms were. I actually took a picture while I was picking up my package and uh, yeah, it was a pretty easy transaction. And I would do this if I was living in an apartment and I was afraid that somebody was coming to steal uh, my packages. So uh, pretty cool feature that Amazon has there. I'm sure they've had it for a long time. I just don't use Amazon very much. All right, continuing to go down here, we have Verizon and AT&T. I uh, actually just bought more of AT&T uh, this past week, another five shares. So now up to 15 shares. This is one that is a huge telecommunications company. It also owns the subsidiary HBO, which launched HBO Max in May. It has very reliable cash cow-like dividends, and it has a very strong starting dividend yield right now as well. All right, then we have Prudential at 63.16. Company is for people that aren't like us and just want somebody else to be investing their money for them, which is totally fine, right? Not in the stock market it, picking uh, and being more hands-on with your money isn't for everyone. And they also do sell life insurance as well. So I bought this at some really great 
uh, points here. Starting our average cost is forty nine ninety five. Have a twenty six percent return on them. Probably should have bought more. And I actually just got my first dividend for them uh, since owning it. And that's six shares, one dollar and ten cents a share for six dollars and sixty cents. Then we have the oil stocks. This is another sector that I see people selling out of real quick. Uh, though these have been recovering just a little bit here. I'm just going to continue to hold them, maybe enable drip on them. Was disappointed to see that they, at least Shell cut its dividend, but uh, at this point, just going to hold on to them. I see oil prices rising a little bit, uh, at least where I live, or gas prices, that is. Then we have Duke, one of the best utility companies out there, uh, up on this position, almost 9%, and this pays a very strong yield of 4.36%. I got in closer to around a 5% starting yield. Southern, same concept, up 7% on this one. 3M and Honeywell, these are more of the diversified industrial companies. So 3M, I don't have the best uh, average cost on this one, so I'm still down considerably on them, but hey, I mean, it's just nice to hold a company like this that has over, what, 55,000 different products, that has over 100,000 different patents, uh, adhesives company, among many other things. I uh, actually just got paid a $10 dividend from them, so that was pretty cool. I think that was actually the first time that a stock other than NRZ paid me in the double digits, so that was pretty, pretty interesting to see after all these years. Honeywell, another diversified industrial, just like 3M. You probably know them for all their household appliances. I do have a video on them if you're more unfamiliar with what they do. So this was actually in like the 160s earlier this month. So 162 on June 8th. So it's fell a little bit here, but this is a great company. I'll just continue to uh, average in over time here. Also got the drip going for this one at 5.02 shares. Then we have McDonald's at 189. Probably want to add another share of this one. Uh, right now, average cost of 192 down just a little bit. And then we have Disney. This is one that I really wanted to talk more about here. So Disney theme parks are going to be reopening mid-July. Now, this is a big economic hub for Florida and California. So I'm really glad to see that people who are depending on the tourism industry, they're going to hopefully now be able to get their job back as they get to go back to work. So the Disney campuses in Orlando, Florida is where the NBA season is scheduled to resume action. Now, why am I talking about the NBA? Well, it does involve Disney here. Disney, of course, owns part of ESPN. So basically what the current plan is that training camps, a few more regular season games, right? The NBA suspended their season in mid-March, and then they're going to do the playoffs. So players and staff would be staying at Disney hotels and they would be tested for the C-19 every day. ESPN, which I mentioned is partly owned by Disney, it's going to be able to televise a lot of these NBA games, and with people not having many other activities to be able to do right now, that means that they can charge more for their ads, ad revenue coming in, and there's going to be a lot of people tuning in to watch this. And there's actually now been some player backlash that I wanted to discuss. So the first issue here that some players have is that they're nervous for their health, and I can totally understand this one. Just because these are world-class athletes, that doesn't mean some of them don't suffer from asthma or other illnesses, such as uh, Larry Nance Jr., who actually has Crohn's disease. And I can totally understand if a player just wanted to sit out. And it looks like the NBA is fine with players doing that. They're just going to get a reduced pay, uh, and it doesn't look like they'll be penalized. The second one is time away from family. And this one I don't really understand because, you know, the players, they're basically going to be in a bubble. Uh, families will not initially be allowed, but I don't really understand this because <laughs> players are already going to be on the road for their job most of the time anyway, right? It's not like being an NBA player allows you to just be spending so much time uh, during the season, at least, with your family. Plus, players need to be able to provide for their families. If no games are played, that means you won't be able to get paid. And it's just that simple. If your life is so tough because you have to go maybe six weeks without physically seeing your family and you still get paid millions to play basketball, I'm not going to feel too sympathetic towards you. 
And then more recently, players have felt like it's more important to be protesting for social justice causes rather than be a distraction for the NBA if it was back. I can see where this one is coming from, but I feel like NBA players have these huge platforms such as when people from the media ask them stupid questions. They can now use that to discuss uh, what they feel uh, in their hearts about these issues. And that's going to get huge traction, right? Uh, it's going to be all over uh, the news, right? People, for some reason, do seem to care about what LeBron James thinks about uh, X. So uh, I can see that be I can see that NBA players are able to use this platform uh, for good here. They can also use the large amounts of money that they're making to be able to reinvest in minority-owned businesses. And I personally have a really big issue with the player that's kind of leading the opposition toward returning, who is Kyrie Irving, and he actually believes that the earth is flat. He's also made so much money that he would never have to work another day again in his life thanks to being in the NBA for almost 10 years. He's been leading the charge to not resume the season. So Kyrie is also injured and he was already not going to be playing uh, regardless of if the season resumed or not. You know, I'm kind of going on a tangent here, but I don't think that he should be allowed to be taking away from other people who actually need this money to support their families, such as rookies who haven't been around long enough to be in Kyrie's shoes. And remember, a player's window to make money is very short, just like our window to be making our peak earnings is a pretty small window. This is lost time that won't ever get, they won't ever get back. A new player turns 19 every day and they would love to be in these players' positions. But that's just my opinion, guys. What do you guys think about Disney? Uh, if they're even making the right step in reopening Disney World, Disney World come next month. Do you think it's like too soon? And uh, I, I just really hope that the NBA, Disney, ESPN, they're all able to get back on track here. We can definitely use some consoling during this divide that we're going through. Plus, it would be able to revitalize the economies there and a lot of people could get their jobs back. So in terms of me right now, I'm down still on Disney. Uh, it's unfortunate that they had to suspend their dividend, but I do think uh, they are coming back uh, eventually. So I know that was a little long-winded, but anytime I get to talk about sports, I'm going to be able to take it if it uh, relates to some of my companies here. So we have the railroad stocks and CSX and UNP. So CSX, I'm down just a little bit on this one. Very small position in my portfolio. UNP is a little bit bigger here, making up 2.5%. This one I've had some pretty good returns on. Pays a pretty nice dividend as well. As you can see in the last... Um, Three months, it's actually been up 29%. At one point, was at 184, then it fell this past week. All right, then we have General Mills at 6015. This is one that's really surprised me how well it's done in the last three months and year. It's been up uh, 21% and 13% respectively. Sometimes you buy stocks thinking you'll just hold them for the dividend yield, but then <laughs> companies like General Mills come and they they not only give you a great starting dividend yield, but they also give you a 23% return. So wish I had invested more in them. Um, I'm very uh, happy that they've been doing so well. And then of course the stock that I bought for the first time was Costco. So I've been waiting for this one to, to, to fall a little bit below 300. So I went in and bought it at 297.80. Uh, 82 cents and check out my Costco video if you're wondering why I love Costco but uh, I have a feeling I'm not the only one that loves Costco and now now I don't have to worry about all the special dividends that they may or may not give out Costco only has a 131 billion dollar market cap which compared to Walmart and Amazon is not very big but they are growing and they are growing pretty fast here five-year 115 percent return and then as we continue to go down here, we have Chubb at 125, insurance company that's international. I uh, haven't had the best luck with this one. Insurance is really getting hit hard here. And then to round out the portfolio, we have SPHD, uh, monthly dividend paying ETF, uh, down a little bit on this position, but uh, every month I just continue to get around, uh, around almost a dollar from them. So it's not too bad of a deal. Um, so let me know what you guys think of the portfolio. I know I'm going to have some criticism in there, but that's totally fine. Uh, always open to constructive criticism um, and look forward to interacting with you guys uh, and best of luck in the markets. And remember, none of this is financial advice. Always do your own due diligence. This is for educational purposes only. Mm -hmm.